So let's keep it moving down to the next kind of tier of, of guys here. Uh, and Big Co, I noticed that you didn't have Josh Jacobs in kind of the same uh, tiers as, as me and Big D did. Um, I have him in the Saquon, Barkley, and Josh Jacobs uh, tier there in, in tier uh, one, two, three, four, and tier five. Uh, and then you had Jacobs a little lower. Big D, you have him, you know, in a – and in a, in a spot that I, I don't hate either. What's the reason for the fade of Josh Jacobs here a little bit, it feels like? Yeah, man, I might need to backpedal off of this right here. You know, you just put me in the corner here. I, I, I <laughs> Honestly, uh, I, I was struggling so much with the uh, ETN, Saquon Barkley area that I just didn't – I just I couldn't hone in my Josh Jacobs. Uh, and he, he probably should be higher. Like the Packers offense, is there – any offense that we're just putting on a pedestal more right now? The 49ers. That, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, the established. They've ones. earned it. Like the, right. the not, not but like, that's my point. Like, as, you know, the Dolphins. Like, yeah. The, and the, the Packers are awesome. Well, but I'm saying like as, a, as an emerging offense, mm-hmm. right? Like, I mean, obviously you got your Niners and you got your Eagles and you got your Dolphins and those types. Those big time offenses have been around for a couple of years. Like the, the, the Texans, here we come. The, the Packers, here we come. Like they're, they, we just lifted them up. And you, and then you got Josh Jacobs with the awesome comment that says, "Hey, they had a running back that would run twenty five yards to get four. And I'm gonna run it up the middle and take what I and I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna go right up in that thing and I ain't scared of it kind of thing." He was give he threw a little shade at uh, Aaron Jones, but yeah, I mean Jacobs could absolutely smash. So and he's not old, so I, I I'm probably too low. I mean just I mean good call out way to way to way to call me out. I'm probably too low on Jacobs. Maybe I need him in so many places in my fantasy teams. <laughs> I don't want to get overly excited, mm-hmm. get my heart broken. Maybe, maybe in other drafts, and maybe in in startup drafts and mocks and stuff, I was just taking other so many like just younger upside, safe value, best asset available type wide receivers in those areas, and I just kind of subconsciously kept pushing him down, uh, and then pushed him down the running backs too far. I, I, Jacobs didn't lose a step. The the yeah. the, va- the Raiders' entire offense imploded last year. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the way I view it. As he he just moved to the best situation I think he's ever been in. I completely agree. And yeah. even if the Packers' offense isn't doesn't take that huge next step and evolves into this great thing, like I still think it's the best situation he's been in. Would it now, shock you if he scored twenty rushing touchdowns next year? No, it wouldn't and, shock and me either. Look, I like Marshawn Lloyd, and I can I don't mind drafting Marshawn Lloyd, but. And I know a lot of people are, are over there kind of saying worried about the contract and the way it's written and like it's a one year deal for Josh Jacobs. And it's like, I really don't care how that contract's written. Josh Jacobs is going to come out there and do what Josh Jacobs does. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's basically been be RB6, RB8, get a bunch of carries and perform when called on. He's a good pass catcher. I, I just I feel like he can do everything that they want him to do and a little more. You put you sprinkle in Lloyd. Look, this has always been an offense that uses has been using two backs. And I think AJ I think Marshawn Lloyd is an upgrade to AJ Dillon for sure. And I think these guys are a nice one two punch. But I mean I, I don't I, I'm not making any mistake about this. I think Josh Jacobs is about to be, you know, a bell cow and and score a ton of fantasy points just like he pretty much always does sans the last year where he was holding out to try to get some money and then just on a dumpster fire of a team that fired their coach in the middle of the season and and went with antonio pierce yeah I, i know a lot of people are are down on him because they felt like he lost a step at the end of last year and i could tell you uh in my personal life if if i'm working for a company that i don't really enjoy the people that i'm around and I'm not really liking and jiving with uh, upper management. It's 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 a struggle, right? So I don't think he's lost a step. I think he's going to be, you know, uh, you said RB8, RB6 is kind of where he's been. I think this raises his ceiling for me. I think his floor is still safe, but I, I, I feel like, and that's kind of why I put him right on the cusp of the the tier three for me, is I, I, I honestly feel like he could get into that RB4, RB3 discussion overall um, on this Packers offense. You know, obviously things have to, to to swerve right, but you you already laid it out. I mean, Love is is a pass catcher that, I mean, sorry, <laughs> Love is a pass thrower. Um, you know, he, he doesn't, we were talking about on the wide receiver role, we don't know which one to target because, you know, he's distributing the ball, but the whole reason why I just stumbled on that was he's distributing the ball. And um, Josh Jacobs to me is, 
probably a tier and a half to two tiers higher than Aaron Jones is talent wise. So if Aaron Jones did as well as he did the last couple of years in, in Green Bay, I just don't see any way where Josh Jacob does less than Aaron Jones. So. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree there. So Big D, you had James Cook pretty high. I think that brings us into kind of the next tier where we have everybody. Rashad White, James Cook, and Pacheco are kind of the next tier. And then does eh, DeAndre Swift get in there? Is DeAndre Swift, you know, in 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 that next tier w- with those guys? And, and I'll let you talk about Cook for a little bit uh, here in a second, Big D. But it feels like in every startup that I'm seeing and every, you know, I, I can't, in, a, in an established league, I get no value on White, Cook, and Pacheco which is, I think, what almost steers me off of them in a startup a little bit, even though I know that they'll probably score some pretty good points. James Cook probably being the one I'm the most, I'm probably the most bullish on, I guess. And then I don't, you know, I've never really figured out why I'm I'm not terribly, terribly high on Pacheco. It always just feels like there's a yeah, but there. And Rashad White, I think, is an excellent receiving back, but I think Bucky is going to put a dent in, in what's going on with Rashad White. So, how do you guys view these kind of next batch of running backs? And, and Big D, you had Cook the highest, so I'll let you take the floor here for a second. Yeah, I mean, I put Cook in the fourth tier just because I don't feel like Ray Davis is a real threat to the way that Cook plays. You know, with Diggs out of the pitcher and, you know, I, I don't want to say a new offense, right? But but the offensive coordinator took over, what, in the middle of last year? I should fact-check my brain before I Yeah, I think it was week 10 or things, 8 or it, something like yeah, that. Yeah, but but I'm pretty sure it's right around there. And I don't know. Cook Cook finished strong. I'm not a huge White and Pacheco person, but I feel like Cook is kind of in that position where I don't see much competition for him. And he finished as, what, RB... Um, 11? 11 last year, yeah. So... I think he can still tag around right right in that area. Maybe RB, RB10 if he gets a couple extra touchdowns. Maybe RB14 if he doesn't and, and drops a ball or something. But but I think he's right. He, he's pretty safe in that end of the wide or, or running back ones, beginning of the running back twos range. And so that's kind of where I put him. Is I think it's overall ranking was uh, 14 for me. And I think that's it's pretty fair or accurate where I think he's going to end up. Um, yeah. Like I said, maybe plus or minus a, a few spots. All right, Big Co. Let's let's talk about this group here. You did have Josh Jacobs in there, maybe maybe recanting a bit, maybe moving sure. him up a little bit, but how are you viewing the, the White, Cook, Pacheco, maybe Swift, somebody else you have in there? How are you viewing that group of guys here? Because that feels like the, the next group after this that top 13, I think, that we just mostly ran through. Mm-hmm. Well, again, that's we I value the rookies over them because exactly what and then Big D just hit it again. They're they're getting pushed down in value, but like the, you just showed, Jay Wayne had the stats up for Cook. It was fifteen, sixteen hundred total yards on forty five something catches. The Bills lost receivers. They had they might have the most vacated targets in the league. I don't think James Cook catches less than he caught last year. You know, um, he may not have 1,100 rushing yards again, but he did catch. He did get more carries towards the end of the year with the change in offensive coordinator. So even if that levels off just a little bit, it's going to give him more carries if he stays healthy. So maybe he has more yards on the ground. Maybe he has more of rushing touchdowns on the ground, but I think his receiving and receiving yards is going to go up. The way I the way I see the play it is if the value is there. In a in a startup, if you're if you're going into a new league this year and the value is there, I have no problem with you taking a white, a Pacheco who's going to probably score plenty more rushing touchdowns and catch plenty of balls than than James Cook. Take a but take Pacheco at value. Take James Cook at value. We all get very caught up in the dynasty values, and I am definitely right. I'm leading the pack in that. <laughs> but if you can, you know, play the game of the from a redraft perspective of what these guys are going to be doing and you might not, you know, you might not every, every other manager in your league might not be right in that, you know, with you, but in the first four five, six weeks of the season, Pacheco white and cook here, they're, they're probably going to be doing work. They're going to be catching passes. They're going to be scoring touchdowns. They're going to be scoring fantasy points. And so right when the thing starts getting heated up week four, five, six, seven, you know, people are going to need those running back points. And so you, as a, as a, it's hard to draft these guys. And that's why I said at value, because I'm not just being like, all right, I'm taking James Cook because of what Big Co said, and I'm going to go and I'm going to trade him. First of all, making trades is tough. It's not as easy as it sounds. But 
if what the one that hangs around the longest in your draft like if it's hard to take those guys over the the first late first round rookie pick receivers you know it's hard to make mm-hmm. a pick on that on that running back and and not take a lad mcconkey or uh the guy for the, brian for the thomas. Jet. brian it's hard not to take the the, the ridiculous upside of brian thomas because if he hits he's going to be ridiculous you're not going to be at a t- he's unattainable if brian right. thomas has a 70 yard touchdown right week and one. we know what like we talked about a little bit in the last episode or or however you're listening to this that that wide receivers have become the second best currency in super flex at least yeah and, and probably Based the best on. currency in non super flex of of kind of how everybody views mm-hmm. everything at the moment so like you said it is hard to take it's, those guys it's so hard to pull the trigger and i'm not telling you to pull the trigger but if and if you're an established league it's way easier to go trade for these guys and you're not going to have to give up a brian thomas to get a to get a pacheco you know you're you're, you're going to be able yeah. to get them cheaper than that but and if, if you're an established team and a good team like Putting a Pacheco or a or a James Cook on your team, you made the playoffs last year. You got some bad playoff luck, but you probably quote unquote, I should have won. My team was the best team in the you know. Getting those guys and layering them onto a good team is a good way to play it. You don't want to layer those guys on a team that's rebuilding because they're it's a slippery slope. But I don't see any reason why Pacheco in the next year or two and White and Cook in the next year or two are gonna lose a ton of value but we got some really fun rookies that are coming in and i don't want to open that can of worms but you know you got some rookies and you got some we got rookies that just came in with benson and brooks and this and that so that's how i'm looking at these guys their 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 value is getting pushed down for a lot of reasons and i'm sure there's a guy out there just you know in your league that may be super high on cook or super high if if the champion if the best team in your league last year had white on his team he's going to value him more than you do yeah because he was crushing right you know right Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. After these three, because I think we've kind of all agreed that's, that we're about somewhere in there. Big D, what, who are the next group of running backs when if, if we were in a startup or just you were going to trade for that you'd be going down the list after those guys that, hey, is it is it Swift? Is it Najee? Is it Montgomery? Is it Mixon? You know, who's because I feel like at this point we've now just gotten into the abyss of there's so much difference of opinion of who these next guys are is it you, you taking just all upside here are you taking kind of the known stuff in in the Najee and are you going for the older guys here at this point is Mixon's kind of the youngest of the old guys it seems like so Big D what, what's the play um, for the kind of the next set of running backs here yeah I mean for me I've got Swift up there with uh, with White with the boys that you just kind of talked about he finished I think 20th overall last year he's going to we talked about up and coming offenses I think you know hopefully <laughs> I know the Bears are hoping this right mm-hmm. but at the end of the end of next year I'm going to hope that the Bears have uh, have also you know got that up and coming offense because they've got the weapons to do it now um, and and to me it's like um, between Swift and Cook as an example like I think Swift has a higher upside from a talent perspective to be in that running back you know, one range, you know, maybe a little bit deeper than, than Cook would. Taji Spears is another one that I have up there. Uh, he's in the same ranking as these boys. Uh, you, you talked about Najee. I really like Najee this year, what they've done with the offensive line. And I think that there's going to be some uh, squeaky wheels that uh, that all of a sudden stop squeaking because Najee is going to be in an offense that, that's catering to his, his strengths. And then um, I think the other one that I don't think you mentioned was uh, Ramonde, uh, Ramondre Stevenson. I can't mm-hmm. talk today, boys. Um, uh, I, I think he's another one that's kind of gone under the radar. Um, New England signed him again. It's a new offense, you know, all that kind of stuff. But he's kind of in that um, middle to, you know, 16 to 20 rank for me as far as value picks that I'm looking for. I can get him late in. I don't know what he is in our ADP currently. 9-2. But nine two so yeah getting stevenson in the ninth round i'm you know i feel okay about that and then my boy montgomery is always hanging around this tier man he's uh he's a his ability is the touchdown ability so you know it's 
it's a risk, but I, I just feel like his it, he can still handle the rock too. And so yeah, so Swift, White, Spears, Harris, Montgomery, and Stevenson are all kind of in a in a chunk for me. And I, I depending on what my team is looking like, or if I'm already established, depending on what I want, if I'm, I'm looking for a upside or if I'm looking for floor, you know, I can move move and shuffle this this tier around a little bit. But but that's kind of how it stands right now. Yeah, and I I kind of zeroed in on this conversation because we're doing a ton of mocks all the time. Uh, for our ADP, which is what we're always referencing over on the uh, Discord. We got a free one. We got a $5 holler where you get extra episodes every month. So be, make sure you go check that out. A lot of good good content, like fun stuff going on over there. Plus drafts and ADP and rookie draft kits and rookie rankings. And obviously our dynasty rankings will be up there very shortly as we go through them here. But I have the hardest time in those drafts in that, you know, late late seventh, early eighth of of who to pick and i gotta be honest i'm usually not terribly running back heavy through there so i'm like always scouring which running backs to pick and i always end up not picking any of them yeah uh, so big co you know I, that's when i usually do look at it like a levis in there or you know even a bo nix or a Penix in there just seem like a little bit more fun picks swift is is sometimes around and and maybe i should get a little more comfortable with taking him but then you know it's javante which we haven't talked about maybe we'll double back on him but you know, if I can wait a little bit and pick up the Montgomery or the Alvin Kamara or the Najee here in the ninth, tenth round, I might be a little more into that than than kind of dealing with that late seventh through mid mid eighth uh, kind of round there. And I I usually default to somebody like a Christian Kirk uh, at that point. Perfect. So, uh, Big Co, what what's your general thoughts on that running back area now? Once you're approaching that point of a draft, and you know, it kind of reflects rankings, which is kind of why I wanted to. Absolutely. talk about that area yeah you know and of course we can pull up mock drafts here and we can you know obviously in a mock draft there's no trading so and when you're in a draft you can move around and make things happen but like you said in that in that you know late seventh eighth round ninth round like i'm i'm just you know if i'm if i'm getting a christian kirk or if i'm in the need and i have to get in my george you know kittle or my njoku area you know, if I'm grabbing a Christian Watson or Ricky Pearsall stayed around too late, there's just players, there's dynasty assets that mm-hmm. I want rather than taking a running back at that spot, you know, and then, you know, a round or two later, then that's when I'm going to grab my Blake Corum to stack up with my Kyron Williams investment, etc. cetera. So I, I don't think I'm really planting my flag in that region there. Like I, I have no problem if, if Javante Williams can it just at some point in the draft becomes this glaring value, then I, I can take him. And I know that I can sign up with Najee Harris's points for sure. There's moves that I want to be making around there. You know, like you said, I mean, if, if Chris Godwin hangs around too long, you know, mm. is he is he safe in this league for two or three more years because he's a high quality receiver right. that's, that's not gotten the love well, that he needs? You right. Know? And I, I think that's kind of reflecting on what I'm saying. Like, it, you know, this I think that's probably why I have the hardest time ranking in this area um, because – I, I do get into this area and it usually ends up being Kirk, Hollywood, mm-hmm. Deontay Johnson, Chris Godwin, like guys who aren't terribly old and I know can go out there and score me a bunch of points and then I'll just I'll circle the wagons and come back and, you know, if I need to grab a Connor or an Alvin Kamara a little later to build my team out. But even so, then I'll just I'll smash, you know, six, eight running backs here in a row and grab a bunch of ifs and maybes and, and I want to trade for my running back. So I've had a really difficult time kind of in this area everybody in general in our group just has no love for Javante big D any thoughts on how you're playing Javante Williams and and where you'd be willing to mess with him I know you talked about it for a second there for me it's a lot of times and I I think you're getting the theme for me right is running backs the who what system they are in and who's coaching them is is important to me more so than probably other positions maybe outside of quarterback but but point being is like i i think javante has a pretty decent ceiling but i don't know where his floor is and that scares me right and so that's why i kind of stay away from i kind of stay away from him because that 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 denver the Denver situation there is pretty fluid. I I don't know where they're going to end up this coming year. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how the checkdown machine uh, Knicks uh, does for them. That could be a positive for Williams, but again, I I just I just don't know what that offense is going to look like. I don't know what Sean Payton's going to how how it's going to funnel out. So for me, I I've been personally just kind of staying away from Williams and and the teams that I have him on 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 established leagues, I haven't really been trying to trade him because I'm I'm I don't know what I want value wise for him, right? Yeah. Because I I feel like right now, 
in one league, you know, I've seen him go for way more than I would have paid. I'm, I, I can't think of the example right now. And then in another league, I think he went for like a, a second and a third, <laughs> you know, and right. it's like, like the value, the, the value range on him right now is just, it's, it's unbelievable. So for me, I, I'm kind of, uh, I have him in like a, a tier under, He's in the Pacheco tier for me. I, I know that you guys talked about Pacheco and, the, and Pacheco's higher, and, and I do like Pacheco, but I I don't know what that uh, – uh, I don't know. We, I won't talk about Pacheco too much, but he's kind of in that tier where I'm not quite sure. I've got him in uh, – so a couple names that he's around, Pacheco, Lloyd, Charbonnet, Mixon. They're all kind of in that same range for yeah. me. I don't know what Mixon's going to look like when he gets in, in, in at the Texans. I'm not sure on Sharps this this upcoming year. And and I really like Lloyd. I had him ranked high, and I just got done talking about Josh Jacobs. But but he's you know for me, I, I like him kind of in that and in, in that long range AJ Dillon role and and maybe more. But anyway, from the Williams perspective, I just I I can't get a good enough gauge on him to put him up a tier or two. He he could yeah. easily by the end of next year, he could probably be in the tier five, tier four for me if I if I see it. You know, he's he's played better after towards the end of the year with his injury. You know, Sean Payton, I think, is is going to change around the offense a little bit, and we'll see what they do to to help Knicks along in the in the early stages. But um, anyway, yeah, that's uh, sorry, I, I don't, I didn't really give a direct answer because I, I think he's <laughs> no, so I, fluid I, right now. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, I I think I like buying Javante Williams. I the, I don't think any team's running backs caught more passes than the Ron- than the Broncos last year. We know what Sean Payton wants to do, and we know how he does it. They just Smugly. they they just <laughs> spread all the running back catches out, so it didn't feel good. Um, he so still he caught have, a lot of balls last that's, year. That's exactly, but it wasn't you know they didn't they just you know went around. But I mean he forty seven catches last. He shouldn't year. even been playing for um, half the damn season, as I, far as I'm concerned. I'm I'm yeah. a big I'm a big fan of buying Javante Williams at value. Like I'm not gonna go reach up for him, but like his I mean what when it when it happens, it's gonna be too late on this value. I think you're there, you'll still have somebody that w- was you know hurt for a couple years having him on their team and if you know after a couple weeks of the season or maybe this is like there's there's a couple players that are like week one you just got to make sure you watch that game and make a play on them before people figure out what happened and Javante's one of them if if you see that Javante's looking fantastic out there and maybe he caught three or four passes maybe he didn't but it could have have or you know Nick sailed a couple over his head trying to check it down to him and didn't go mm-hmm. right you know, you got to know what was going on week one and, and maybe they'll show it in the preseason in one game and it'll be too late anyway. Or, but you know, but like, I really think that Javante Williams is a fantastic value. There's a couple guys out there in that draft that I would like to have before him, but in running back wise, this is, you know, you get into a zone there where, you know, he's 24 years old. Right. So like I would, I'm going to take a chance on him. And he had a fan club before this. He's, he's got a fan club. Exactly. Right? So you like that when a fantasy miss, player miss, has a missed tackles per touch, bro. He was the best mm-hmm. ever, you know? And I love, you know, around later, I love getting the 29 year old Kamara to, to buy most of my dynasty drafts at this point this year with the way things are laying out. If I don't get one of those top studs, I'm probably not taking one for a while. Right. So like, Alvin Kamara might be my first running back and mm-hmm. I'm totally fine with that if I'm going productive struggle because I don't you know but or or Kamara could come in there and give me my 18 points a game I like the idea of a Sean Payton running back and you get Javante Williams for this cheap had a fun cl- a fan club like Casey said shouldn't have been playing at all last year and came back and I th- it's a make or break for the, for Sean Payton soon enough anyway yeah. you know so I, I don't think there's any reason that Javante can't come out there and and be the best running back on their team there's a lot of risk reward there it feels like there's so much smoke surrounding denver and particularly the running back position right now every other thing is is just talking about javante earning it and all the other running backs behind him and then clips cut up out of context just to make things Mm -hmm. seem one way which is a sad state that we're in just on about everything for clicks and bullshit sure it's real it should be fucking illegal this is true it's stupid but it feels like Javante is going to end up being the fucking guy who gets a bunch of fucking run over there in Denver and absolutely smashes it. And it was all right in front of everybody's yep. noses. And we go, damn it. How did yep. we not see that? But I think, you know, a lot of people just feel scared to be wrong. But I mean, it's getting to the point where it's OK. You're, if you're wrong, it doesn't even like we're to the point where it doesn't matter that much. Right. Probably not going to build the best team if you take home run cuts 
the first 12 rounds, right? Now, you don't want to take a home run cut every freaking pick for the first 12 rounds. And again, in a real draft, you've traded around, and I might have uh, what I like to have is eight players drafted through six rounds. And I might take the seventh and the eighth round off mm-hmm. because I've traded up and moved my picks around. I, most every draft I've had in the last five years, there's been a round or two where I didn't have any picks. And then, you know, there's always that one guy that falls way farther than I thought. And I'm like, dang, I wish I had a pick there. Yeah. But and then then you got two or three picks in, in, in 10 spots. You know, there's 10 picks and you got two or three of them. So, you know, that that's I'll, I'll find myself into some Javante. And then 12 rounds later, you just pick up, you know, estimate estimate, you know. Right. And or so you, M- M- Jaleel, if you want, Jaleel's going to be a lot more expensive because he's got a fan club, but he is certainly not a workhorse not going to be a workhorse and so and and you know maybe estime is not a three down goal line to goal line type back but um, with somebody that you're going to be able to get in the 18th round so it doesn't even matter but if javante either a gets hurt early or b for some reason doesn't improve of a, a year another year removed from a bad knee injury which again he played all games last year so that was a huge plus for yeah. his dynasty owners you can back up there's nobody being drafted at all for in that on the whole team basically right you know so like the what it costs i mean this is another this is a very cheap offense to get into Mm -hmm. and it's they're at bottom of the barrel right Right. now them the patriots Mm -hmm. everybody hates the steelers you Mm -hmm. know there's a couple teams so like if bo nix comes out there and can complete 68 percent of his passes yeah i don't care if they're all four yards and they're gonna be they're gonna be a bunch of short ones and then detroit franklin and mims down the field that's fine that's the style that's that's, and that's kind of what Sean likes to do too. So that's, right, there's 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 points to be gotten yeah. off of this the off of this uh, offense for very very cheap. And again, but kind of like what you were started to say, your investment is low already. Javante Williams is the most expensive player on this offense, right? So and he's ninth round. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, Bo Nix with the rookie quarterback and Superflex is going to be right beside him. But the idea is the same. Like you can take a couple swings, even if you take just one one swing on the team. And if it's Javante Williams, even if you don't have Javante Williams, I'd definitely say get, you know, get Estime in the 18th round. You have nothing to lose. Yeah. Right now we have Estime at 17-4 and Jaleel at 18-06. Okay. Kind of what you were saying for the most part, just a little less value on Jaleel, a little more. Uh, that's you get the shiny I, Honestly, object. I thought it would be, I thought, I thought object. Jaleel would be two rounds ahead. Um, all right. Well, let's, let's bring this conversation back to kind of where we started. We had, I had Rashad Cook and, and Pacheco kind of as the guy I want, guys I wanted to focus this conversation on and to jump start it. And then for me, I think the next couple of guys are, I think Swift could be up in there, but I think Big D, I think you did a good job of rounding them up. Like Monty, Najee, Mixon, Ramondre, Javante, Tajay, and then Alvin Kamara kind of hops in with those with that older crowd. If you need the the production there, uh, with with kind of the running backs, and then, then I think the rookies kind of come in with Lloyd and Wright. Let's wrap this conversation up talking about what we're doing with with Zamir White here. I was hoping you'd say his name because. Um, He's a guy who who floats around, you know, a little after some of those guys we mentioned, but right in the mix of some of those other guys, he's he's super polarizing. Should should have a role for sure this year, and, and could could have a lot of touches. So, I think Big Co is probably the highest in the room on him. So I'll let Big Co start the uh, this this last conversation on Zamir here for you know couple minutes yeah, that'll, that'll that'll give me time to scroll down in my rankings to find him <laughs> yeah sure well i liked him as a cheap rookie running back coming sure. out he got no love coming out and he was on a stacked stacked georgia team you know you got to be good enough as a high school project pro- prospect to be on georgia's team it's kind of like that you know 10-year run that bama had sure and and you know um clemson could definitely get in there with some of their position players you got to be good enough to be a wide receiver at clemson for the last 10 years you know like go tigers there was there was a good like if you're if you're on the Georgia Bulldogs the last you know X amount of years at a running back you got to be good enough to be there right and I liked him and he was fast big and strong and fast I'll give you a chance Mm -hmm. like if you're big and strong and fast I'll give you a chance good dude too FFD loved him over here so I'm big fan I'm big fan of Zamir White did he have a what what, what was what was Zamir's did you have something that you always said on him every time we did it no well he almost died as like a baby (laughs) I think okay (laughs) There, there we go, we go. Yeah. pull it out um <laughs> so, that's every time <laughs> that's that's it pull it out and pray um so the the thing i there's somebody just said yesterday somebody just put out a huge tweet on yesterday i'm talking about I'm trying to find zamir white highlights and couldn't find any well that's the same Not thing true. it's the same thing that happened to josh it's the same offense that worse that happened to josh jacobs right you 
Look at the quantity and volume is king for fantasy running backs. Mm-hmm. Volume is king. And you got a freaking middle linebacker as a head coach and a this man's got 40 pound biceps, bro. Mm-hmm. He's got 40 pound biceps in his shirt sleeve. And you don't you don't think he's about to get thirty carries a game? I know you think there's going to be some mix in with the other guy, and that's fine. What if eighteen carries a game would probably come close to the top three of rushing attempts in the league? And yes, it's going to be a watered down offense. You got you got one of the best receivers in the league who's getting a little older, but he's still one of the best receivers in the league. And then you bring in the new guy with Brock Bowers, who got is going to have to make the defense kind of figure out like what is he doing over here? I assume. Um, and that could be that could be build my own narrative. But again, you just go back. There's not you're not building a narrative when you talk about a defensive head coach who wants to run the rock. Yeah. And volume is king again. So I think that Zamir White, who is a jacked ass man, but also can run a four three forty. So like it, it's, if he's not out there tearing up, you know, 25 yard rushes every play, it's not going to surprise me. I don't expect it. But four four. Can he break it out? Can he break one off for sure? And I just think that the volume is there. What you're paying for is, at that point, nominal. Now, in a redraft league, his ADP is way higher. And I don't necessarily need to take that gamble myself. And I don't do much redraft, but I've just heard some of these people mm-hmm. talking about players in uh, best ball. This, the, you know, so there's sure. a, a six or six round best ball player, maybe not my flavor. But paying a uh, tenth round, a ninth round, late ninth round a dynasty pick, for what could be, I'm in. Big D, did you want to come off the top rope here, or what do you? Yeah, I just finally <laughs> found him. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. He, he's not that far. Still down. scrolling. I, I, I like him. I, I like. I like. I like the concept of him. He's really similar to Javante Williams for me. Uh, I think Big Co laid out Javante really well with the Sean Payton offense. But is Sean Payton going to be there? And if I'm looking at it in a two or three year window, it makes me a little nervous. If I'm competing, I don't really give a shit. And it's the same thing with uh, Zamir. I think Zamir has the ability to, you know, um, to be the David Montgomery for the Bears, right? Like what what Montgomery meant to the Bears, I think Zamir White can mean to the the Raiders this year, like and, that. and that's that's good. I mean, I yeah. think that's I think that's still solid. I think he's he's a solid pick. Uh, he's a solid RB two. It just for me, he he just doesn't have that upside that you know like uh like a stevenson has you know and so so he's a little bit further down for me but but i don't hate the player i don't i don't hate him i don't hate javante williams i just am not sure where uh value wise where i would be willing to take him in a draft nor what i'm willing to pay for him right right if i'm buying a running back more often than not right i'm competing that's the 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 rules of the game when we're when we're, right. when we're building dynasty and and I, I you know i mean depending on the price I, i'm there's not a player on your rankings my rankings big co's rankings that depending on the price i wouldn't pick up like i'm sure. not i'm not one of those people that are like no i'm never gonna have that guy like that's that's not me but it's just like i there's enough upside players where i would probably go in a different direction and might be a little cheaper so um so I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't have anything to say necessarily negative about him. I just yeah. think he's RB twenty, RB twenty four, RB twenty six. Yeah, I think he'd definitely get there. So I think that's kind of his floor, and probably you know with with seventeen or eighteen carries a game, staying healthy, he might even be able to get into that RB fourteen, RB thirteen discussion, and maybe even a little higher with some touch uh, some touchdowns. And uh, you know, I mean, with uh, Gardner Minshew being there now. The way that he ran that offense in uh, Indianapolis, and I know it's two different systems, but he spreads the ball out, but which also <laughs> allows the running back to have a little bit more uh, option for lane because they they have to guard. And Brock Bowers is there now, and Mayer is still still around. So there's there's enough talent on that team where I don't feel like he's, you know, even though the team's maybe not the top tier team, I don't feel like he's. Um, suffocated right like right. It, it, like a blanket on a fire like it i don't feel like it's there i feel like he's going to have the opportunity i just don't see him being anywhere higher than an rb14 a mid-level rb2 is all you could ask for a 10th round startup sure pick, right a mid yeah, yeah, and especially exactly. a team like me who i'm gonna have a you know a decent quarterback or two 
some solid wide receivers and some really good tight ends, right? So yeah. and some high end wide receivers, depending on where where how we start. But let me throw some water on my own fire because I'm I am going to look into this year and look at the redraft perspective of what these guys are projected to be like and what people's expectations of their performance are sort of like because even in dynasty we get very caught up in the moment and it becomes very day traderish mm-hmm. in season sure <laughs> very yeah. day traderish in season so the week one for the raiders they play against the chargers which don't really have a good defense but they will be bought in and week two they go against the ravens so that's not great <laughs> week Week three against the Panthers, so he might run loose. But then week four against the Browns, so he might not run lo- You know, that's not great. Yeah. So you got a balled-in Chargers team with a new head coach, and you're going to run loose against the Panthers week three, but you're going to have, you know, so it's not like if I would, if it's three out of four tough weeks weeks week uh, to start the season. If you could flip that in three out of four easy weeks, mm-hmm. now your day trader-ish sis- yeah. your situation becomes a lot more, uh, you know, enticing. Yeah. It, you're going to have a little bit more, Hey, we three yards in a cloud of dust for sure against the Ravens. Yeah. Um, and most likely against the Browns as well. And who knows how the Chargers defense looks with Jim over there coaching them up. So not exactly Probably. the start to the season that I was hoping for. They're gonna be playing some D. I'll close up shop with this. I think the best point there is that Antonio Pierce wants to run the ball and he seems to like Zamir. So that's positive for Zamir. I know nobody likes Alexander Madison, but I'm not like Madison's probably going to mix in, take some of these carries. And I think Lob takes, you know, receiving work away. So like we all, all we're projecting this big number, but that number could be down to a 15 carry game kind of player there. So all of a sudden we could be looking at 15 carries, not a lot of targets. I just, it just seems like we're just giving Zamir just this giant workload immediately. And I just, I'm not so sure that that's exactly what the point is or how that's going to shake out. Now, if Antonio Pierce says that's what we're doing, you know, I don't know. We got to see what the OC and how he kind of ranks in here. But uh, the other thing is, is like, I just, I don't see, I don't, I'm very cautious long-term. Like somebody like Javante, even if, if the Broncos kick him to the curb, somebody's going to be more than happy to scoop up Javante Williams and give him another shot. Mm-hmm. I just, it just feels like next year the, the, the brass at the top could be going, Hey, we're, we're going a different way of running back here. Samir is going to be still on the roster. It just feels like I'm just very unsure of how that whole situation is going to play out. It doesn't seem as clear cut to me as, as I think some people make it out to be. So that's what gives me hesitancy of Zamir. It's not like I, me and Jason gave Zamir plenty of love. I have Zamir on, on teams me too, because he was free and I liked right. him. Exactly. Um, and so, you know that, but he would be unfortunate, you know, the v- first couple of games of the season maybe aren't going to be the best. And Z- he could come out and just absolutely just clobber it. Like the last four games were very good with Zamir and he got a lot of run. Raiders most likely probably going to be a middle of the pack team for mm-hmm. the most part. Um, I don't think they'll be dog shit, but I don't think they'll be super exciting. And and we don't, Devante already seems like he's like, <laughs> this sucks. Yeah, for, yeah, maybe. Well, your recent prognostication skills on what might happen in a year or two for persons or, or teams have been really, really quality. So I don't want to buck that. But I would say that I would bet decent money that head coach Antonio Pierce says, my guy Zamir plays more, not dominates but plays more ahead of that rookie that that you like that can catch balls i think zamir has got a little bit more third down work in him than than well, what you're giving him giving i think him i there. think the gm tom telesco and on that austin eckler tie-in i think that that feels really good to me that that lob who's been a just a pass catching savant and is very very underrated I think is gonna is gonna end up getting a lot of work in the past game for them i mean and i'll triple down on my stance of that you you and, and furthermore like i would almost take a pie to the face that Antonio Pierce is not their coach next year. That's a chance too. There's a chance. And I that. think that does not, but another check mark in the not boding well for Zamir white. If, but it, it, I would agree with that. But if this team with Antonio Pierce as the coach, that is completely the ball in to want to smoke sure. cigars at the end of the, at the end of the game, sure. after a game, they want to smoke, smoke cigars in the, lo- in the locker room. If they can make you black and blue for the game and, and, and win six or seven games, they're going to give him a chance to get a quarterback. Maybe and now maybe Pierce had, has a has another year of coaching because the players love him. I, I hope they, I if, hope if so. they don't almost almost take a fight of the if face. they don't <laughs> implode if they don't implode. So I I agree with all that. I just you know he could definitely be gone and I but I think that Z- Zamir 
has a chance. And and then you you put it, if you put a tenth round pick into Zamir, then you go get that Dylan Lob mm-hmm. with a twenty third round. We got give me an ADP on Lob. You don't even have it because it's yeah, so it's eight, you know what I mean. Eighteen. So eighteenth. Okay. So no, little, I probably take him a little more juicy than I thought. You you probably put his name in there just to have him in ADP. But you oh, know I don't know if he's in here or not. He's uh actually eighteen eight. Right, so you you if you if you've gotten Zamir at ten, you just get eight in an eighteenth rounder lob to throw in there just in case yeah. he breaks out and becomes a, a mini Tom Telesco favorite and and all you know might as well. Yeah, no, I, I mean I'm not I, I don't usually touch Zamir and like I said and I have Zamir so it's like a I I liked him when the price yes. was super cheap and now I'm like I don't want to pay that and I don't I'm, I'm like even though it's not a lot and if and I, I agree with you with the sentiment of what you're saying of that it hits it's awesome uh, I just think there's I, you know I'll take 80 Mitchell in that spot and you know obviously we're talking about running backs yeah, and, and yeah, we yeah. talked I, get I, it. I felt like we wanted to mix I wanted to mix in how I approach this which is why that makes this a little more difficult in this area here even though I usually need a running back really bad and I'm just like ah fuck it I'll wait Still until take the best I'll take I'll available. take I'll wait until round 12 to start drafting running backs and I'll take the Kendra Millers and the Jalen Wrights and the Zach Mosses and, and the Lloyds and the Singletaries and the Chase Browns and then I'll come with Ford and Mostert and, and Gus and you know I'll take those will be my shots and next year I'll be able to do whatever I want with a running back position. Just like you said, mm-hmm. easier to buy the guys we let off the show with mm-hmm. and stomach to, to buy them at mid season in season than it is to draft them. Right. Right. Love so, it. all right, let's wrap up with that. Appreciate you guys. Be sure to check us out on the discord, $5 holler Patreons. That's the, how you get access to it. Go check out the FF dynasty on Patreon. You can get a, uh, little little ffd shirt right there at uh in the link in the description revelrybrewco.com get those out if you want to support the team in a different way and and get and look fantastic doing it it's very comfortable it is Um, more than very comfortable it's the most comfortable shirt i have five star review on the pod if you're listening we appreciate all the new people that that we saw last week great great success in the in the downloads uh so appreciate you and i'm I'm glad you uh stuck around for this one and we'll catch you next time peace peace